Welcome to the Draperie. This is Dr. Chris Baker, DC. And guys, I gotta tell you right off the bat, I'm pretty excited. I am on a heater. I have won back to back events for the last four tournaments that I've played in for SPDC with a different deck every time because I like to brew and I like to uh, just try to get there with something new every time and see how the format can handle it. So yeah, so check this deck out. So Sultai Grind is interesting to see. Just again, a little quick snapshot of the meta here. Golgari Grind is a green stompy deck, mono blue tempo deck. Uh, Junt deck. Uh, Demir. Orzov, Mardu, Azorius. So interesting that the people who decide to play uh, don't want to play Is It, even though I think Is It is really good. Mono Red could potentially be very good too. So aggro decks are just not super out there right now. But yeah, so the grind is real, control decks are real. So yeah. Everything from Mono Black Zombies, is a Burn, Tamir Control, Sultai Grind, these decks are all pretty great. Um, so yeah, let's go into the deck tech. Again, the whole deck is built around Pulse of Marasa. I feel bad because I rated this card a D in my set review, and I'm just blatantly wrong about it. Um, it's just pretty great in a deck like this. The Teamer deck didn't run Elvish Visionary, and I think that was a huge mistake. I think Elvish Visionary is great. The team, the teamer deck had Tormenting Voice on turn two, but more two drops is better, I think, and it's a great pulse target and a great, great sacrifice target um, for Vulture Haven, which is why I thought about it in this deck, but not in the other deck. Um, I originally had four Bone Splinters in the main, but it turns out... You don't always have creatures that you want to sacrifice. It's actually kind of a high cost. And it does, And if they have Feet of Resistance, they can get protection from it anyway. Turns out Oblivion Strike is just perfect. It kills anything, no matter what. Um, the only way that they can save their guy is by bouncing it. Since you can't use Feet of Resistance. So this deck is similar to the Teamer deck, except it's trying to grind even harder and not so much token based um, but we still make a bunch of tokens so we have a lot of removal uh, for big creatures oblivion strike bone splinters uh, but not so much for small to tokens or you know a lot of x ones which is a little rough uh, we've got a lot of comes in the play tap lands we've got four four and two on the dual lands so that's 10 plus the four evolving wilds is 14 to help out get our three colors, this deck really wants three colors. We want the black early, we kind of want green early, we kind of want blue early, so we're willing to take a hit to have good mana. Uh, Sultai Emissary also fills the role of being great at slowing down early aggressive decks and getting value off of Vulturous Avon. Uh, we want one Nantuko Husk in order to be able to put the combo monastery lore master in our graveyard shall it get pacifismed or the like another good sack outlet since we don't have fire conclusion and collateral damage like the other deck did but we do have two bone splinter four aven one husk i think that's good it's a decent threat on its own as well can save your guys from getting exiled from oblivion strikes and complete disregards too in touch of the voids um sky spawner is great as a flyer, and I figured, I figured Sky Spawner would start to be more popular. So instead of just running a bunch of incubator drones, which I think are great, especially against the Gurmog Angler meta, is to run Aspiring Aeronaut. So I just wanted to try this one in this deck because um, it turns out it can be pretty good against Sky Spawner and Palace Familiar and other flyers. Sand step outcast, stuff like that. So things that make one one flyers. Um, incubator drone is 
still making an appearance in the deck, but not as a 4 of because Vulturous Haven is just the best 4 drop in terms of creature. Again, Lore Master, you gotta think, this is either a 3 drop or a 9 drop. <laughs> it is one or the other, but sometimes it's safe to play other times. But yeah, Aven is just, it's a 2-3, it just happens to have flying as well, it doesn't make a guy, but it draws cards, so it's just often a lot better. The Pulse helps us, uh, helps us offset the life loss as well. It's notable that we're not running Read the Bones in this 3-drop slot, even though it is great in Searches for Cards, we're not running a ton of cheap removal, which is where Read the Bones shines. We're running a bunch of creatures, so we would rather have Vulturous Haven kind of fulfill the role. Haven and Visionary fulfill, and Cruise, you know, plenty of card draw. Fulfills the Read the Bones role, and we have more creatures. Creatures combo with Pulse of Marasa, where Read the Bones does not. Um, one Ruin Processor slips in the main, just to hedge against other people's removal spells. Treasure Cruise is the best Delve card. We could run Gurmog Angler now that we're playing back black, but I really don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just kill whatever our opponents play and just win with Ruin Processor and go over the top. And the last sweet card that we added to this deck was Grave Purge. It's another... It's like Pulse Samarasa number, number 5. It, it's a card that combos with Lore Master that lets us put any number of creatures into our graveyards. Again, I, I thought that... Pe more people would start picking up Pulse of Marasa after my deck last week. Like, the Teamer deck dominated so hard last week. I thought if people watched the Lore Master Pulse combo happen, they would start to recognize, like, hey, uh, we should maybe do something about this. And I think Great Purge is a way of going over the top of people who are trying to copy my strategy and do the same thing. Which is another reason why I like Oblivion Strike more than Bone Splinters. If they play the Lore Master Pulse, I want to Oblivion Strike the Lore Master to cut them off of it. So yeah, so that's the main deck, just trying to grind. Sideboard is... Other than missing Boiling Earth, I think I built this one a little bit more serious. Didn't put any random morphs in it. But uh, we get... low At the low curve we get Sidious' Faithful. Being able to block and absorb damage and reset delve creatures or tokens, pretty great. Some duresses against treasure cruise decks or read the bones or negate the stainful stroke, whatever kind kind of decks. Three Reeve Soul, I think one of the weaknesses of this deck is like maybe like a green red landfall deck or like a blue red is it prowess deck. A deck that can like get ahead early and then just beat, beat, beat. And so having a Two drop removal spell is pretty good, so I think Reeve Soul is the best at that slot. A little bit of counter magic to Stainful Stroke and Negate. Uh, they're not the best, but I like having access to them in a deck like this. Because, uh, again, because you can get whatever spell you want back with Lore Master, you don't need to load up with a million of them. We're tapping out on most of our turns, anyways, so you don't want that much counter magic. Complete Disregard. Uh, it's kind of like Oblivion Strikes 5 and 6, or Reeve Souls, you know, 4 and 5. Uh, the Exile Clause is relevant compared to Reeve Soul, and the Mana Cost isn't that bad once you're running all of them. Uh, it also helps that, yeah, they can't feed of resistance because it's devoid, stuff like that. Also included Sweep Away. I think this card... This actually does it all. It's everything that I thought Whisk Away would be, but this card is actually good. If they're an aggro deck and they play pump spells, like Tamir Battle Rage, we can reset their guy and just blow them out. If our creatures get pacified, like our Rune Processor or Lure Masters get hit with a pacifism, and we don't have any sacrifice outlets, we can bounce it back to our hand and then replay it. Um, yeah, it's kind of another way to, you know, if our pulses get countered, it's kind of acts like a pulse on a lore master. We can create like an infinite blocker loop, which again, it costs a million mana, <laughs> but uh, we can, you know, 
for 12 mana we can you know play lore master uh flip it get back sweep away block cast sweep away target angle or lore master and kind of run that loop not likely to happen but it's mainly just to be an anti-defensive you know an or defensive measure against uh aggressive decks and a second rune processor just in case we need to go over the top uh no you see no other green cards in the sideboard here. If I thought Isolation Zone or Impact Tremors or there were any good equipment, all the equipment in this format are pretty bad. There's no no Bone Splinter. There's no Leon and Bola. You know, there's nothing nothing crazy. It'd be nice to have some good equipment at Common, but yeah. If there, there's, but there's not. So if there was, I would advise running Naturalize and or uh, what is it, Crush from Earth or something. I would I would advise against running Plummet. It's too narrow. Sometimes they just don't draw their flyer and you have this dead card in your hand. But it's Return to the Earth or something is what it's called. It's a four mana card that kills an artifact, a enchantment, or a flying creature. So. It's just so much more applicable in different matchups, and I don't think the mana cost is what you need to worry about when with other decks. So, the instant ability of naturalize and the cheapness of it might make it worth it, though. But if anything, you could only run. You only need one in your sideboard, and really, I mean, I could cut into gate a ruin processor. I could cut any one of these cards. It's really not that important. The deck just is a well-oiled machine. And hopefully you see that today, as you can, you know, watch some pretty dominating games, some pretty close games. One game in particular where I was almost certain that I was in a losing position, and you'll see pretty quickly which game it is, and somehow I don't lose a game where I think I'm clearly uh, supposed to lose, or look like I'm supposed to lose, but this deck just doesn't allow that to happen. This deck can come from behind incredibly well and maybe not put that much pressure on people, but it just has a stranglehold on decks that aren't trying to grind as hard. So yeah, so I highly recommend this deck. Uh, you can change a few cards here and there, should be fine. Uh, if the metagame involves a switch to a lot more fast, aggressive decks, I can see you know, just putting more removal spells in the main deck, just maybe cut bone splinters, put some reeve, reeve souls in the main deck, cut some of the four drop creatures, and you know, maybe not play the grave purge as well, since that's only really good against the grindy decks. Yeah, do something like that, but uh, stay tuned for I got five matches of Soul Tie Grind coming up. Thanks for watching.